Uh, we're joined today by the CEO of Novonix, uh, Dr. Chris Burns. We welcome Chris back. Chris, last time we spoke, I think your share price was around a dollar. It's now close to the $2.60 and we've kind of seen significant momentum across the battery supply chain post the election of uh, Joe Biden. Now this, from what we've seen in the past, this shift in uh, government policy um, uh, combined with significant new funding generally brings a kind of once in a lifetime opportunity. So how do you plan on capitalising this rising momentum with uh, Novonics? Yeah, thanks for having me back, Tim. And I think really something we've talked about for the business for the last couple of years is the critical nature of timing, right? The battery revolution, the electrification of vehicles and, and then the grid has been impending for the last few years. And it's changed from a question of if uh, to a question of when. And of course, with things like Biden being elected and stimulus packages really promoting green technology and the progress of people in the sector, you know, compelling electric vehicles coming to market, the time is now. And as we've talked about, we're seeing supply chain grow outside of Asia, battery cell manufacturers to supply vehicle companies in the United States but that supply chain has to grow with it. And that's where we've been positioning the company so strongly over the last few years. And over the past couple months, we've ticked a few big operational boxes, partnerships with Harper, funding from the Department of Energy to support our, our future furnace technology program, and as well bringing Jeff Thon, who I started the Novonics Technology Solutions business from his group a number of years ago, uh, onto our team as our chief scientific advisor, is really all continuing to position us for what's going to be this rapid phase of growth as we start to deploy and scale our capacity, specifically in our pure graphite plant. Chris, as part of this kind of wave of funding that's coming into this battery train sector, um, there was a recent transaction with Scylla Technology. It's raised around 600 million US for its anode plant. Um, that's, now that's the largest raise we've seen in the US battery supply chain to date. Does the size of the funds raise kind of sign uh, signal a greater appetite by the investment community for this kind of new technology? It, it absolutely does. It shows the appetite for investment in what is, as I said, such an important time in nature of advancing battery technology. Of course, in the United States, we've had a number of companies list around new battery technology, new electric vehicle companies, uh, seal is recent raises still on the private markets, but it's showing that investors are seeing so much value in those companies that are positioned well and have the opportunity to deliver strong growth in the sector. I think an important differentiator between Novonics and some of these other companies is, you know, we're continuing to innovate and work on today's battery materials. Our anode, our graphite program is what is currently used in almost all batteries around the world. Our new cathode initiatives, which we're scaled to pilot now, are to produce materials that are currently being used in electric vehicle batteries now. And it's our thesis that we don't need revolutionary breakthrough materials and technologies to promote this wave of electrification. We need to continue to innovate to drive the cost down in today's technology that is already ready to be implemented at mass scale. The, the compromises that used to exist in electric vehicles, people's concerns about range or charge time and the like are dwindling by the day and the remaining barrier is cost. So all of the new technologies you hear about, if they can't, when they, if and when they prove themselves to the market over the coming years as a viable technology, if they aren't cheaper than where the cost curve of today's battery chemistry has gone, they're going to have a very hard time entering the mainstream market because price is so important and such a focus of all of our materials programs. From a, an institutional perspective in Australia, we we'll see a lot of fund managers positioned in the spodumene lithium producers, which has a significant higher foot, uh, carbon footprint than some of the cleaner players like Lake Resources and Vulcan. So from an investment perspective or an institutional investment perspective, when do you think we're going to see this switch from institutional investors out of the carbon intensive lithium players into the cleaner players? And do you see any trends internationally? 
I think you'll certainly see the ESG side of the investment becoming more and more significant across all investors' decision-making programs. So over the past number of years, you've certainly seen strong investment into that lithium space, uh, primarily driven on who can deliver volume and the right cost structures. As I said, price sensitivity is so important. Um, certainly over the past year or two, and what we're seeing more and more every day, is the investor community as well as the, the end user or customer community of the cell manufacturers or the uh, vehicle OEMs care more and more about the carbon impact, the carbon footprint and the environmental impact of the process technologies. So I do think um, even the resource type plays have a huge opportunity to differentiate themselves with advanced technology. And that's really the decision in our company to really focus on downstream technologies to make final products um, where we can differentiate ourselves more significantly than being a resource focused company. Chris, in, in regards to lithium, how, how are you working with the, the, the cleaner lithium players in the market? Yeah, you know, as part of our cathode initiative, we've taken it on to work with a number of lithium producers, both mainstream and some of the companies working on some of these clean technologies like Lake and Anson Resources, uh, where we have interest in their materials to run in parallel to our cathode and precursor development program, all in a focus of trying to work toward developing comprehensive material strategies from the lithium to the precursor side to deliver lower cost, uh, lower environmental impact cathode materials as part of that program. Now, Chris, you, you touched on your appointment of Professor Dr. Jeff Dahn. Um, he's obviously an ex-Tesla executive. He's come back to work at Novonics as your chief scientific uh, officer. He's kind of recognised as a bit of a, a guru in the um, EV battery space. Can you tell us a little bit more about his appointment and his ongoing relationship with Tesla? Sure. So I've been working with uh, Dr. Dahn for 12 years now as I started in his group um, in 2009. And it, we're very excited to have him be able to join our team in this role, get involved in our materials initiative, some of our big downstream customer opportunities in our technology solutions business. Uh, for the past five years, he's been on an exclusive contract with uh, Tesla. I overlapped with him while I worked for Tesla for two years from 2015 to 17. And uh, that contract is being renewed this summer between Tesla and Dalhousie, the university. And what they've done is they've brought two new great professors onto the team to expand that program and the support from Tesla and the research that will be happening within Dalhousie. And Professor Don will stay involved in that lab. However, is a, has worked with Tesla and Novonics to come to an agreement where he can work with Novonics alongside of his work with Tesla and the research group at Dalhousie. So of course, it's going to be great to have his insight from years of academic and industrial knowledge, really as a key battery material scientist to join our team, be involved in some of our internal initiatives, our work at Dalhousie University with Dr. Mark Oberbach, and as I said, some of our customer programs, and we're excited to have him join. Thanks, Chris, always good to talk to you. It's an exciting space and uh, always appreciate your insights. Great, thanks for the time, Tim.